The first time I saw a CDJ, I was terrified. Coming from turntables, it was like an alien spacecraft. I had no idea how to use it, and the crowd knew it. If you're used to DJing on a controller and laptop, the way CDJs do things can really throw you off your game. It's like trying to play a game of tennis with a sock puppet and black shorts. But there's a way in Rekordbox to export your settings and preferences. You can make the CDJ work more like your home setup just by plugging in your USB drive, giving you the confidence to focus on your creativity instead of how to use the equipment. Plug in your USB drive and open Rekordbox. Make sure you're in export mode. Click on the USB device in the tree view on the left. You'll see a panel open up on the right hand side. This is a set of settings and preferences which can be stored directly on your USB drive. When you plug in your USB drive, it will automatically apply all your settings and preferences to the decks and mixer. This is especially useful when you're taking over from another DJ who may have set the decks up like a home gym where the barbells are made of cakes. Across the top of the panel, we have different tabs which give us access to different preferences we can set. Under the first tab, General, we have some useful settings related to the waveform display and key format. For example, we can change the waveform color between blue, RGB, and freeband, which I prefer. You can also change whether the waveform sits to the center of the playhead or to the left. And if you're used to using the Camelot system for your key display, you might want to change this to alphanumeric. One thing to note here is if the device you're plugging into doesn't support a particular feature, the setting won't be applied. I can't suddenly give a 2012 CDJ Nexus the ability to show an RGB waveform. Instead, I'm afraid you're stuck with the blue waveform which looks like the sky took a dump on an omelet. There are also some things which are just different on CDJs and you can't change them, like the ability to add gated hot cues like you might do on your home controller. But there's still plenty of customization we can do to get it working how we want. Next up is category. This sets the navigation items on the left hand side of the CDJ screen when you use the browse button. They give you a quick way of filtering down all your tracks by the categories you select here. I recommend removing anything here you don't usually use to find tracks. I never use album, so I'm going to remove that. But I do sometimes use BPM, so I'm going to add it in. Sort is where you define the active sorting options available to you when you use the column heading in the browse view. This is a great way of reducing visual clutter and speeding up your workflow as you mix by removing things you never use. Once again, I never sort by album, so I'm going to remove that. I recently deleted my entire music library and I've started using rating as an energy tag. If you want to learn a bit more about how that could be useful, check out the link to the video in the description. Next is the column tab. This isn't an adult website for ancient Romans as you might think. It lets us choose what piece of information is displayed next to the track name on the CDJ display when browsing. Have a think about what information is most important to know about the next track you're going to choose. This may be key if you mix harmonically, or if you're playing Tech House, you might like to use BPM to make sure your fingers are warmed up for that 126 to 126.2 BPM switch that the crowd will never expect. Many DJs use color as a way of grouping tracks, for instance, by vibe or era. It's a bit like tagging. Have you ever wanted to completely rebrand the color pink. Flamingo Fizz, Peony Pizzazz, Cotton Candy Chaos. Well, in the color tab, you can do just that. This option gives you a way to rename those colors that make sense to someone who doesn't work in a paint shop. To change this, just double click on the color name and type in your new one. Press enter. There's one final tab we need to take a look at. It's called My Settings, because all the other settings aren't yours. They're theirs. Pop quiz. On this tab, can you A, edit some settings, B, do nothing. Behold, the wretched spectacle, where the settings lie ensnared in an unyielding abyss, forever beyond your reach. You can change these in preferences. Go into preferences by clicking the cog, click on DJ system, then click on my settings. Make sure apply settings on devices automatically is ticked. This means your preferences will get saved straight to the USB as you make them. You can then spend more time arguing with the bouncers who aren't letting in your best mate Steve because he smells faintly of blue cheese and fromage frais. I'm not going to go through every single setting in here because we'd be here all day, but I've made a really easy to follow cheat sheet that I'll link to in the description. This is where I need your help. The official documentation on this is rubbish and I wasn't able to test every single setting on every piece of gear. So if you see anything I miss, let me know and I'll update the guide. Cheers. For now, I'll give you a quick overview of the things I usually change. There are two main categories of settings you can expand and change. Player, which affects settings on the CDJs themselves, or Mixer, which affects things on your gin and tonic. Expand player, and then DJ setting. 
The first option I change here is usually eject load lock. If it's set to lock, this means you won't be able to load another track to the deck unless it's been stopped. This is really handy for fools like me that forget which deck is currently playing. I also do a lot of looping, so I make sure that quantize is set to on, with the quantize beat value set to one beat. The next category of settings we can look at is the display LCD. These settings relate to the main screen of the CDJ. You can adjust the brightness to your preference here. Because clubs are traditionally dark, I crank this up to just below maximum. Today we've mostly been talking about customizing CDJs, but this also works on any other standalone controller that can take a USB drive. There are a few other preferences here we can change for units that have a display built into the jog wheel. You can see here we've also got some options for the jog LCD brightness, and also the jog display mode. This is thrilling stuff. Expand display indicator. There's some useful settings here to control the brightness of the jog ring. And also a really useful feature CDJs have is showing you which deck is currently playing. It's called on-air display and I make sure to set this to on. In most cases at the club, the CDJs will be linked by a link cable. This means you can apply your settings to all the decks just by plugging into one. But it's a good idea to bring along a second USB drive in case this link isn't there. Moving on to the mixer section now, expand it and go to DJ setting. The main things I care about in this menu are the channel fader and crossfader curves. I like to have my channel faders come in quite fast for double trots, so I set these towards the right. If you prefer smoother blends, you might prefer one of the first two options. I only ever use the crossfader for scratching, so I set it to the hard cut curve on the right. Let's stick this in a CDJ and see what happens. A message will appear, press the menu button to load it to the deck. Even with your CDJ set up how you want, preparing for your gigs can still take forever. Introducing automation into your workflow can really speed up this process and save you hours. In this video, I talk about how you can use Rekordbox tags to automate your playlist creation and speed up your workflow. 